Okay, so let's have a play with NeoPixels. So NeoPixels often come in a strip like this. I've just got one on its own here. Um, and I'll show you how you can control the color and set it up. So just firstly, a little bit about NeoPixels. There's a few different types of uh, NeoPixel strips you can get. Uh, if you're going to buy one to work with, you want to make sure that you're buying one that works on 5 volts. The micro bit delivers 3 volts of power, but that is enough to power about like 6 to 8 NeoPixels before you'll need to add extra power to it. The first thing you need to do to connect up some NeoPixels is you will need to connect the power. So what I've got here is I have um, the black is coming from my ground. Uh, so I will connect that to the ground of the NeoPixel. Um, if you look very closely at the NeoPixel, these there's like little labels on these. So this one says GND, this one says D in, and that's for the information about the color. And this one says five volts. Um, I've got my yellow alligator clip connected to the three volts on my micro bit. So I'll connect that to the other side. Um, and then this one is my data, so this green one. And I've got that set to pin zero on my micro bit. You'll notice when I first connect it up, nothing happens. Um, and that's because even though it's got power, I'm not telling it what to do yet. Um, so don't worry if you connect your NeoPixels and nothing happens. That's because you need to actually give it the information of what's happening. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is I've already, oh no, I haven't. So you need to install the NeoPixel extension. So go into the advanced section, go to the extension section and click on that. And then you can load this Adaproot NeoPixel driver. And now I have this NeoPixel uh, submenu here. And you can see there's a whole heap of things going on. So the first thing you need to do is you need to set up a NeoPixel strip. So I'll grab this set strip and I'll put it in my start. Um, that needs to go in your start because you just need to set it up once at the start. With the strip, you set up the NeoPixel pin so I'm using pin zero and that's the data pin. So that tells it what color to be. Uh, I sell, tell it how many LEDs I'm going to be having in my strip. So I just have one and I say the format. So the different, there's a whole heap of different chips and LEDs that go on the strips. I know that this one is in the RGB and W format. Uh, if the colors, if you're telling it to go a certain color and it goes the wrong color, that just means that you need to uh, play around and find out which format you need to be. Okay, so now the very first thing I'll do is I'll just set it to one color. So back in my NeoPixel menu, you can see here I can go show color and by default it's red. And you'll see in my simulator it comes up here. Uh, one thing to note in the simulator is it's setting up the ground to one side and the three volt to the middle. That's not always going to be the case. So make sure you actually look at what is written on your strip and you connect it to the correct parts. The data one or the thing coming from the pin will generally have a D in. Uh, the other thing to note about NeoPixels is that there's an arrow on them. So I'll just show you, this is a different type of strip. You can see there's an arrow. You need to go on so that the arrow is pointing forward because this is the inside and this is the out because you can connect multiples together. So if it's not working, check that you're inputting on the inside of the arrow. Okay, so I can show red or we can show maybe something something else. Let's see how purple looks. I will download this. And there we go, I'm showing a purple. It's very, very bright. Um, it's actually a bit too bright to be able to see well with the camera. Um, the brighter the NeoPixel, the more power that it uses. So you can save power and not drain your batteries by turning the NeoPixel brightness down. Again, I'm going to do this at startup. 
So NeoPixels are really bright and even at half brightness, they're still going to be really bright. So I'll just go to my NeoPixel section and I will go to, maybe it's in the more, yes, yeah, set in a brightness. So I'll set the strip brightness to, let's just take it down to 100. So 255 is maximum. And you'll see that even at 100, it's still going to be pretty bright. It didn't drop that much. I could even drop it down to something like 10. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's not that bright, but it maybe gives you a better indication of the color here. It's a little bit hard to show it very well on camera. Um, you'll probably want, I mean, that's, that's still bright enough. So it depends on what environment you're going to use it in. And it's always good to save on power when you can, especially if you're using a battery. Um, and the less power means the more NeoPixels you can probably use at once. Okay, so that's fairly basic. You can use it to set color. You can use it to set a whole strip the one color. Um, I will do another video at some point showing you how you can do a rainbow across a strip, but I've only got one NeoPixel here right now, so I'll just show you with one NeoPixel. So let's have a little bit of fun with this. How about instead of showing one color, or how about we um, control the color with sound? So there's a few ways we can do that. So we can set the NeoPixel color by using this drop-down menu. We could also set the NeoPixel color by two other different ways. So you can see here we've got hue, saturation, and luminosity. Uh, in the more section, we've also got red, green, and blue. And you can use the red, green, and blue to mix colors. What I'm going to do though is I'm gonna use the hue, saturation, and luminosity. Actually, let me just start Photoshop for a second and talk a little bit about color. Um, the hue is what the actual color is. And for the NeoPixel, it goes from zero to 360. So that is from red all the way back around to red. The saturation, I believe, goes up to 255. And that is the saturation um, as in the color value, like how strong the color is, like going down to pastels and up to full dense color. And the luminosity is the brightness of the color. I'm just gonna make a new Photoshop document just so we can have a look at color values. And let's click on a color here. So we're looking at this color block here. Um, and as I change the color, you can see that I've got this hue, saturation, Photoshop refers to it as brightness. Um, you've also got your RGB values. So there's different ways of representing colors. Um, if I change the hue, you can see that my hue values are going from, three, from zero, which is red, through the color range, all the way down to zero again. So, so 360 is up here, down to zero. Um, my saturation changes if I move towards it being white. So that sort of can create pastel colors. And my brightness is here. So from full brightness down to black, which in this case is actually dimming the light. Okay. The great thing about using hue, saturation and lightness to control NeoPixels is that you can use a sensor just to control what color is showing. I'll just jump back to Chrome, there we go. Okay, so what I would like to do is I would like to change the color value of this and I'm gonna make it change on the loudness of the microphone input. Um, I'm also going to need to map these values. Okay, so let's set up a variable and I'm going to call this variable uh, sound to color. And I'm going to set this here in the forever loop so that it's constantly changing, so that it updates as the sound updates. 
And for starters, I'm just going to use the sound level here and let's see what that does. Um, so firstly, I've set the sound to color to be sound level. I'll set my saturation to 255 and my luminosity. What I found is you only want your luminosity really low, otherwise you're going to be setting it to white. Um, unlike what I just showed you actually in Photoshop, you, it doesn't, after playing around with it, this is what I've worked out. Okay, so now I'll get my variable sound to color and I'll put that in the hue. Um, and you can see that my sound goes from 255 to zero. And let's download this and see how it works. Whoop, whoop. And you can see as I, it's a little bit hard to see. I might just try turning the lights off in here. See if that helps. You can see that it changes color uh, based on the sound that's happening. Uh, but I'm just getting from red to green. I'm not really going all the way up through the purples, which is what I would really prefer to be doing. But you can see it's sort of reacting again. It's very hard to see in here. Let's put the luminosity even down to, let's just see how it looks at five. You might be able to see that better on camera. Nope, that just turns it off. <laughs> yeah, that's too low. I'll try 10. Maybe that works. Yep, that's sort of, maybe that's better. Mm. This is worth uh, trying out for real. But yeah, it's sort of switching here between uh, green and Green and red. I'm going to put the luminosity actually back to, what did I have it at? 20. And you can see on the simulator as I change the color, it's, yeah, it's sort of giving us more of a range. I'll just take this out for a second and just show you. So if I set the color to 358, I will be getting a purple or a pinky red actually let's download this and see yeah it's sort of a red if I go to maybe let's try out 320 what's the simulator telling us we got pink at 320 at uh, 280 let's see what the simulator Ooh. <laughs> is giving us a purple uh, but we're going to use the map function now to actually map the color into a better range and I'm also going to first use the serial to see what actual range I'm getting from my microphone so let's go to the serial and we will write the value and I'm going to write the value of I'm going to call it sound level and I'm going to use the sound level input here. And I'll download it. Okay, and let's look at my device. So you can see I'm sort of going between what? Mm, 187. Is, is what's recording as the loudest sound I'm actually getting in my microphone. So that tells me that my microphone is giving me a range between 0 and 187. And so that's the range that I want to be changing. Okay, so I'm going to set sound to color instead of it being the sound level. I'm going to get a map function, a map block. And I'm going to map the sound level from 0 to uh, 187 and I would like to change it for values from maybe 0 to 280. So that's going from red up into a purple. And I'll just, I don't need the serial here anymore. But now I'm going to use this sound to color value for my hue. 
So that is in the variables. Sound to color here and I'll download it. And you're going to see I get a much better range. Ooh. Again, it's a little bit hard to see on video, but I'm getting quite a nice responsive range. Just to give an example, I will swap this back out and I'll put a sound level back in so it's unmapped. And I'll download it. There we go. Okay, so I'm not getting as good a range, although again, it's pretty hard to tell on the video. Um, so yeah, this is again using the map function to get a much more accurate range, to map it to the range that I want. So you could use anything um, to do this. I'm using the sound level to sort of create a volume meter with light. Uh, you could instead use the accelerometer to change different colors or all sorts of things. Um, so that's an example of NeoPixels and how you can use them to do some pretty fun stuff with lights. Uh, you could do this with temperature as well. Um, some of you I think used a temperature where you created some if else statements to change the color of the light. You could actually set, use the map function to set this range as well. Okay, thanks for watching.